Hello, this is Vance, and this is Monday, March the 23rd, 2015. These are CL trades for today using the slow hand method for price action. It's a pretty decent trading day today, uh, especially when, if you've gone on this first trade down here. I'll tell you what I saw. As far as the overnight was concerned, price opened at 46.41 last night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, price trended down uh, mostly over the overnight. And of course, we had this first... Uh, uh, early this morning, we had this uh, turnaround probably somewhere in the neighborhood of just after 6 a.m. Uh, price moved up to this area, pulled back down, couldn't find a purchase. And I drew these trend lines, this trend line off this bottom here, moved it up off this top, and it really respected this area. So this is really the first trade. It's a, I, I marked it in green because it was kind of aggressive. But at the same time, if you look at your 15 tick stop boxes right under here, uh, it uh, respected it, moved out of here very quickly, retested this area, had a pullback. You see a, a couple of pullbacks here, and then from there it uh, found some purchase and kept moving higher. Another pullback on the EMA right here, two pullbacks down to this area, and then moved up higher. Now, the reason I mark this, and I'm going to do this a little bit, uh, I'm going to talk about this a little bit uh, uh, differently, is that oftentimes you hear, like, use the 800 tick chart. But you probably heard in the past where I've said uh, on a lower time frame or a, or a, a higher time frame, uh, this would be two pullbacks. And because right now, and let me just give you kind of an example here. I'll just kind of sh highlight this area. If you look at this area and this movement up here and these areas that I've got circled, for instance, and let's make this a little bit bigger, uh, you see that. Price looks like it's overlapping right here. You see this overlap? You get these bars that are side by side. And I've talked about it on the 800 tick chart. If you see three uh, bars, it could be considered a tight trading range. Now, that is true. Like this is a tight trading range on an 800 tick chart. But what it also looks to me is that it's like two pullbacks down to this area. So if you add these bars together, you have this first move down, you have this pullback to here, adding these bars together, and another move down to here. So you have a price moving down, we have a pullback moving down on a higher time frame. It's really like uh, a second entry long on a higher time frame. And even though you, you this is on a heretic chart, it looks like it's overlap. Now, what I did here, and I just tried to show to make a, a better example, is to Pull out these examples here, even though they look shorter, but how they look on a higher time frame chart. So what I did was I marked these same areas off on this chart, and this is 1,600 ticks. So this is a higher time frame. This is twice the amount of ticks on this chart. So this is the same area. I've got the lines in exactly the same spot as I have on this chart right here. Let me just make this a little smaller so you can see it. Uh, okay. So here's a, this is on the 1600 tick chart. So if you see this area right here, it's the same as this one right here, corresponding on this chart right in this, in this area. So you see this pullback, you see the first pullback, you see this pullback here and the second pullback. Now this bar, it, the reason that I use the, don't use the higher time frame is that when you look at it, this is 1406 entry point, but down here is, four, is 40, uh, uh, 4577. So we're talking 31, uh, just under 30, uh, 29 ticks, 29 tick difference. And usually you use a stop of 15 ticks. This high lower time frame gives me a better perspective. And even if you look at it from the standpoint of where this trend channel is off these bottoms, let me just mark this in. So if you have a trend channel off of here where these touches are up through here, you can see that the similar channel does hold firm. Now, why do you use an 800 tick? It gives you more opportunity to see more inside the bar. So you can see this, even though you see this one right here, it looks pretty straightforward. You can see more of the movement. You can see more. Uh, it gives you a little bit more information. That's why I use the 800 tick chart. And I find that's most effective on the CL. If you look at this area right here, you see this first pullback, and I say a second pullback down to this area. Well, I've marked it over here. This is where the opposite occurs. Uh, let's take well, let me make this a little bit bigger. In this area, you can see price moved up. It pulled back. First pullback. Attempted, this is, so you had the moves up, pulls back. It's only really a single pullback. So that's why this particular area shows that 
if you're looking using this chart to trade, there wasn't really a second entry coming back here. Well, maybe on this bar right here. So you can see this first pullback failed. And you can say that this bar here was the second pullback for an entry on a limit order on the 1600 tick. But on this chart, it's much more clear because you can see here's the first pullback fails and then there's the second pullback. So you can see that and then looking at it getting here. So that gives you a little bit more information. Even here, it did create a little bit of hesitation, but as long as your stop was below this area here, you were, you were fine. So there's a, there's a second example. The third and final example is right here. You see this first pullback and even though there's a little bit of overlap, it pulls back again right to here. And on this chart, you can see Definitely, first pullback, second pullback, second entry right here, um, off of the the uh, off the EMA and price moved higher. The same is true when you look at it in reverse. First pullback, second pullback for this area right here for an entry in here. This chart you can see with the same bar, the first pullback, second pullback, and your entry is here. But if it was on a if you're using adding these bars together like using. Uh, candlestick math it's a little clearer on this shorter time frame you can see it's a little bit better to get in but we're looking at a doji as opposed to a number of bars on this one where you have to really move this over you have to add these up uh on uh, add these up in your head to see the same kind of two pullbacks down to this area but you can see this is first pullback this low pulls back second pullback down to here and you can see that there's a hesitation and then the a second leg down on this chart, you can see here's the first leg down. It's a little bit clearer, uh, the higher time frame chart. Uh, so that's something just to kind of keep in mind. So just kind of a little example in that respect. Now let's get back to the trades. These trades here, they turn out to be pretty good. And if you're on this trade, here's an area to maybe to add on. Um, pulls up to this area. You have to say two pullbacks, maybe add on. If you're out of the trade, maybe get on this one. When it gets to this top, there's hesitation at the other side of this channel. And if you, even if you move the channel up to here like this, like just touching on this, uh, this channel up through here, you can see there's hesitation and then price kind of fell off. Um, kind of a midline, uh, a midline area right here, full pulls off again down in this area. And of course, maybe response had kind of worked its way off this channel up, up here. Once it got to this area, uh, when price got to the top, uh, this is a second entry short uh, right off of here. So this is first entry, second entry short. Um, not a bad trade because if you're using a 15 tick stop box, your stop is above uh, this area right here, but it's an aggressive trade, a marked it in green. You're using a resistance, perhaps even they could even limit in by keeping your stop above here. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a green trade. You can see it was first move back down to here and then pull back. I didn't mark this one. Um, it, the reason I didn't mark this one is because if you're wrong, I mean, there's not a lot of room to get out. I mean, it's a pretty strong bar. You could have taken it. An aggressive trader might have taken that one, but it was only really that it was a first break. We didn't pull back, didn't retest this area. I was thinking it might retest the here before it fell off, but it didn't. And so you can see this now when you put this chart, when you put this bar in here, uh, off of these ones, you can see that it's a little bit more clear, but you can see sideways movement as it's going down again on the lower time frame chart, um, or pardon me, on the higher time frame chart, uh, you could see that uh, uh, this would be uh, more of a first move back and then the second move down uh, with this capitulation in the middle. Uh, but whether or not there's anywhere to go on here, you'd have to really take a look at it. But when price did get down to this low, and I mean right down to this area right here, we had this overlap, um, a fairly strong, you know, a second, this is a, this area right here where price, a strong bar to go long on. And if any time around here when you have this kind of this overlap, you're looking at perhaps making a purchase at these lows. And, you know, when you get to this area, it's a really low risk trade considering that this is the highs. Let me just move this in here. So let's call it, this is the top of the channel. This is the bottom of the channel or a bottom of the uh, trading range is down here, let's say where the most touches occur, it's not a lot of room. And so if you limit it anywhere along here, you'd be in pretty decent shape. Even so, even still, when price moves up, and let's say that you get in on this one right here, you have, price is meandering along, the overlap might be of a concern. I don't know if you want to pull it, pull, uh, pull it back at this point in time, but if you're, if you're low enough, uh, you can 
look at uh, what we consider support along this this bottom here looking for maybe a retest of this here this area right up here this double top across these tops now you don't know that this is going to happen but certainly if you're looking at buying on a tight trading range it has to be near the bottoms if you're looking at selling at a tight trading range near the tops why wasn't i more interested in a sell than a buy at this level Be it's because even though it is has it's is moving down look at the overlap that it's causing it's reluctantly moving down especially when it gets into this area here when you get these when you get bars like this much side by side action it could fail and fail out again i'm not saying that it couldn't happen but my thinking is that it should have happened here um, and it didn't so if we're looking at two pullbacks, um, here's the first pullback, here's the second pullback, it should have failed here and then continued on. Now, I wouldn't have gotten in on this trade. Um, I wouldn't, uh, it just it doesn't really give you a decent setup here. But as you can see, when this, it didn't continue on. It didn't fail far enough. It didn't, it went into this overlap, which indicates that in absence of selling pressure, there's got to be new, there's got to be buying pressure. And so, you know, and prices aren't going to stay completely in equilibrium for, for an extended period of time. One, either the buyers have to take over or the sellers have to take over. And if you look at it from the perspective of where buyers moved it in the, this, in the morning session, it, this looks on a larger time, on a wider basis, this really looks like a continuation pattern and so what I'm saying by continuation looking at price moved up and traded into this level here like this is where it makes the high it comes back so you can even say on a front frame frame here's a pullback first pullback and really a second pullback down to this area and if you look at it from where we're going to be heading from here perhaps like this now ran out of time this is a 230 um, price couldn't get any higher but this was a pretty strong move if you're expecting it don't know but this was an opportunity to get in and i would say maybe the opportunity is maybe longer more along these lines than near these bottoms but this is an awfully strong bar uh it's worth a, i think it's worth taking it when you have a bar like this after a real uh, standard uh, this overlap over this case especially in this one right here here we had these two bars we had this fail down to here, and then immediate springs out of here. So I think it's worth taking, again, but it is an aggressive trade. And this is later in the day, so whether or not you're trading here, uh, that's really up to you. You don't know this is going to happen. I was thinking more along the lines is it, it may test enough room to test this area right here. If you're right across these tops, that's what I was seeing more than anything else. Um, not thinking that it's going to go and really retest the high of the day and create a new daily high um, or the, the high from uh, Friday. Like and you don't expect that, but uh, at the same time, it's worth well taking if you're the first targets at the 15 tick mark. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I also had a, a video for Friday. I was finished early on Friday because uh, there was a pretty decent movement early on, even before the uh, like uh, from nine to ten. There was pretty decent movement, so I was I was done early on Friday, and I wasn't around. I did do the video, uh, but uh, just to kind of map it out. But it didn't work for some reason. I thought I was, here I was thinking that it was already loaded up, and it wasn't. So um, it's that was on Friday. Anyway, uh, that's what I've got. Uh, this is what I have for today. Uh, I apologize for, for Friday not being able to, to upload that thing, but I uh, hope this helps. Just so you have an understanding of what I mean by a longer time frame, uh, using the 1600 tick chart might give you a little bit more perspective. So review it. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. This is Vance. Bye for now.